Welcome to our series, Seeking the New Music. Today we continue with George Meredith, 1828 to 1909, part three. The years had worn their season's belt. The years had worn their season's belt from bud to rosy prime since Nellie by the larch pole knelt and helped the hop to climb. Most diligent of teachers then, but now with all to learn, she breathed beyond a thought of men, though formed to make men burn. She dwelt where twixt low beaten thorns, two mill blades like a snail, enormous with inquiring horns, looked down on half the vale. You know the gray of dew on grass, air with the young sun fired, and you know well the thirst one has for the coming and desired. Quick in our ring she leapt and gave her hand to left to right. No claim on her had any save to feed the joy of sight. For man and maid, a laughing word, she tossed in notes as clear as when the February bird sings out that spring is near. Of what befell behind that scone, let none who knows reveal. In ballad days, she might have been a heroine rousing steel. On us, she did bestow the hour and fixed it firm in thought. Her spirit like a meadow flower that gives and asks for naught. She seemed to make the sunlight stay and show her in its pride. Oh, she was fair as a beech in May with the sun on the yonder side. There was more life than breath can give in the looks in her fair form. For little can we say we live until the heart is warm. The Year's Shreddings The varied colors are a fitful heap. They pass in constant service, though they sleep. The self gone out of them, there with the pain. Read that, who still to spell our earth remain. To a skylark. O oh, skylark, I see thee and call thee joy. Thy wings bear thee up to the breast of the dawn. I see thee no more, but thy song is still the tongue of the heavens to me. Thus are the days when I was a boy, sweet while I lived in them, dear now they are gone. I feel them no longer, but still, oh still, they tell of the heavens to me. The Sleeping City A princess in the eastern tale paced through a marble city pale and saw in ghastly shapes of stone the sculptured life she breathed alone, saw where'er her eye might range, herself the only child of change, and heard her echoed footfall chime between oblivion and time. And in the squares where fountains played, and up the spiral balustrade, 
along the drowsy corridors, even to the inmost sleeping floors, surveyed in wonder, chilled with dread, the seemingness of death not dead, life's semblance but without its storm, and silence frosting every form. Crowned figures, cold and grouping slaves, like suddenly arrested waves, about to sink, about to rise, strange meaning in their stricken eyes, and cloths and couches live with flame of leopards fierce and lions tame, and hunters in the jungle reed, thrown out by somber glowing breed. Dumb chambers hushed with fold on fold and cumbrous gorgeousness of gold. White casements or embroidered seats looking on solitudes of streets, on palaces and columned towers, unconscious of the stony hours Harsh gateways startled at a sound with burning lamps all burnished round, surveyed in awe this wealth and state, touched by the finger of a fate, and drew with slow awakening fear the sternness of the atmosphere. And gradually, with stealthier foot, became herself a thing as mute and listened, while with swift alarm her alien heart shrank from the charm. Yet, as her thoughts dilating rose, took glory in the great repose, and over every postured form spread lava-like and brooded warm, and fixed on every frozen face, beheld the record of its race, and in each chiseled feature knew the stormy life that once blushed through, the ever-present of the past there written, all that lightened last, love, anguish, hope, disease, despair, beauty and rage, all written there, enchanted passions whose pale doom is never flushed by blight or bloom, but sentineled by silent orbs whose light the pallid scene absorbs. Like such a one, I pace along this city with its sleeping throng, like her with dread and awe that turns to rapture and sublimely yearns for now the quiet stars look down on lights as quiet as their own. The streets that groaned with traffic show as if with silence paved below. The latest revelers are at peace. The signs of indoor tumult cease from gay saloon and low resort comes not one murmur or report the clattering chariot rolls not by the windows show no waking eye the houses smoke not and the air is clear and all the midnight fair the center of the striving world round which the human fate is curled, to which the future crieth wild, is pillowed like a cradled child. The palace roof that guards a crown, the mansion swathed in dreamy down, hovel, court, and alley shed sleep in the calmness of the dead. Now while the many motive heart lies hushed fireside and busy mart, 
and mortal pulses beat the tune that charms the calm, cold ear of the moon, whose yellowing crescent down the west leans listening now when every breast, its basest or its purest heaves, the soul that joys, the soul that grieves. While fame is crowning happy brows, that day will blindly scorn, while vows of anguish love, long hidden speak from faltering tongue and flushing cheek. The language only known to dreams, rich eloquence of rosy themes, while on the beauty's folded mouth Disdain just wrinkles, baby youth. While poverty dispenses alms to outcasts, bread and healing balms. While old mammon knows himself the greatest beggar for his pelf. While noble things in darkness grope, the statesman's aim, the poet's hope, the patriot's impulse gathers fire and germs of future fruits aspire. Now, while dumb nature owns its links, and from one common fountain drinks, methinks in all around I see this picture in eternity, a marbled city planted there with all its pageants and despair a peopled hush, a death not dead, but stricken with Medusa's head. And in the Gorgon's glance for I, the lifeless immortality reveals in sculptured calmness all its latest life beyond recall. To a Nightingale O nightingale, how hast thou learnt the note of the nested dove? While under thy bower the fern hangs burnt, and no cloud hovers above. Rich July has many a sky with splendor dim that thou mightst hymn, and make rejoice with thy wondrous voice, and thrill of thy wild pervading tone. But instead of to woo, thou hast learned to coo. Thy song is mute at the mellowing fruit, and the dirge of the flowers is sung by the hours in silence and twilight alone. O nightingale, tis this, tis this, that makes thee mock the dove, that thou hast passed thy marriage bliss to know a parent's love. The waves of fern may fade and burn, the grasses may fall, the flowers and all, and the pine smells or the oak dells float on their drowsy and odorous wings. But thou wilt do nothing but coo, brimming the nest with thy brooding breast midst that young throng of future song, round whom the future sings.